definitions. They're uh, pretty quick, so we'll get, get straight into it. So the first thing we need to talk about is an integer coloring, which just takes uh, the set of integers from 1 to n and assigns to each of them a particular color, which with I can stop about it more. Which assigns to each of them a particular color. Uh, this work mostly uses just A and B uh, to So this work mostly just uses A and B. Uh, so here we have an example of we're coloring 1 through 15, which uh, we use just that bracket notation and omit the 1 to just for a little bit of ease there. So we can see that we've assigned to each of these integers 1 through 15 a particular letter, which we're calling colors. For example, uh, delta of 1, we've colored with a B. Delta of 5, we've colored with an A, and for each of those, we could write out a similar, uh, similar equation. Uh, we need, so the next definition is monochromatic. So that's just saying that we have a set of these integers which are associated with the same color. So for example, if we have the set Q there, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 12, which we have uh, with the little arrows there, we can look at those and see that they're all colored with the set, or with the color A. So that set Q is monochromatic. So we have another called set precedence. So if we have two sets, uh, two, two of these integer sets, we say that one precedes another if the largest element in our first set is smaller than the smallest element in our second set. So we'll again uh, use the same coloring. So let's say B is 1 and 4. We have B prime being 6 and 8. So the, our largest element in B is 4. Our smallest element in B prime is 6. And unless I've missed something over the past few years, I think 6 is larger than 4. So uh, our set B pre uh, precedes B prime. And we use this notation a little less than sign with a subscript P to, to denote that. And the final definition that we have is uh, diameter. I'll just, I'll just talk. So the final definition that we have is diameter, which refers just to the uh, distance that we have between the endpoints of our sets. So if we have the set C here, 9, 11, 14, and 15, we say that its diameter is just the largest element, subtract, to, subtract away the smallest element. So here we have 15 minus 9, so our diameter would be 6. Now we use all of those uh, definitions to create this idea of permissibility. Uh, using some parameters here, M, R, and P. So we say that an integer coloring uh, of bracket N colored with R colors is MRT permissible if there exist T monochromatic sets of bracket N such that all of our T sets are monochromatic. They all have the same cardinality, which is in this case M. Each set precedes one another which uh, just means that they don't overlap. And the diameters of each successive set is non-decreasing. So they can stay the same, but they can't get any smaller as you move forward. So we have an example of this. This is that same coloring that we had on the uh, first few slides. And so this is a two coloring. So our R, in this case, is two. Uh, let's say our N is three, and we'll pick three sets, T to be three. So, if we consider the set B1 as 1, 2, and 4, uh, with those arrows there, if we have B2, B5, 6, and 8, we can say B3 is 11, 13, and 15. I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about this again. 11, 13, and 15. We can see that each of these sets, when taken collectively, they're all three monochromatic. Now, I will say that our B1 uses the color B. B2 and B3 both use the color A, which is completely fine as long as individually they're monochromatic in themselves. So all of B1 is colored with B, all of B2 is colored with A, all of B3 is colored with A. So, so they are monochromatic. They don't overlap. They all precede one another. They all have cardinality 3, and they all have non-decreasing diameters. So the diameter of our set B1 is 3, B2 is also 3, 
and the diameter of B3 is 4, so they don't get any smaller. And so what that means is that our uh, string up here, delta, is 3, 2, 3 permissible. So our M was 3, we used two colors and picked three sets out of these. So this string is 3, 2, 3 permissible. And we use those parameters to define a function, uh, F of M, R, and T. So the, this function takes in those three positive integers, M, R, and T, and it describes the least, the least positive integer N such that every R coloring of N is M, R, T permissible. So no matter how you color that string, no matter what you do, you can always find sets T sets so that your string is MRT permissible. And in fact, this is a well-defined function and it follows as a consequence of Van der Waarden's theorem from almost 100 years ago. And we also uh, will, just for ease of talking, uh, we're going to shorten uh, these uh, M and R, we're going to omit those here. I do want to talk a little bit about the motivation of this work. So in 1990, uh, 1995, Ari um, Bialystocki, Paul Erdős, and Hanno Lefman studied this thing called zero-sum sets, which of course have been studied far before 95 as well. But a zero-sum set uh, is some set of integers that's colored with ZM, that if you add all of the sets, or all of the elements in this set, you're going to get uh, something that's zero modular that n. And so it began with uh, zero by Erdős, Ginsberg, and Ziv uh, from 1961, which stated that for every coloring of 2m minus 1 going into zm, there exists an m element subset x of that uh, bracket 2m minus 1, which is zero sum. So basically it's saying we can take uh, any coloring of 2m minus 1 into zm and find one of these zero sum sets. And this work uh, is, is motivated by that in the fact that monochromaticity really helps to enforce this zero sum condition. So some of the prior results that have been worked on, uh, most of what we've seen prior in this field is that if they fix the values for m, or fix the values for r and for t, and allow this m to vary. So we fix the number of colors and the number of sets that we want, but allow the size of those sets to vary. So in 1995, uh, a couple of results from that paper I said just a moment ago, that we have that if uh, m is larger than or equal to 2, f of m22 uh, is defined as 5m minus 3. f of m23 is defined as 9m minus 7. Sorry, that's f of m32. Uh, a few years later, it was discovered that f of m42 was 12m minus 9. And actually, just a few years ago, the, it was discovered what f of m23 was, which that is, uh, it's a relatively hairy equation, so I uh, omitted it from this. Now, what we've done with our work is rather than <coughs> let the size of our sets vary, we decided to let the number of sets that we are using vary. So we fixed M and R and allowed T to vary. And so we've set M to be 2 and R to be 2 in this work. And our goal was to find an exact value for F of 2, 2, T. And uh, the first step towards this goal is establishing a lower bound. Now, I will say, I mentioned this a moment ago, but we're going to abbreviate MRT permissibility just to T permissibility and F of 2,2T two, two, just to F of T since we fixed those values for M and R. So the lower bound that we were able to find was that if T was any positive integer, then F of T was greater than 5T minus 5. So that means we need at least 5T minus 4 characters to ensure this uh, T permissibility that we've done. So a little bit of the sketch of the proof here. So we did this through induction and contradiction on the coloring A, B, A, B, A. It was repeated T minus one times. So for 
t equal to 1, it's kind of trivial, it's just an empty string. But for t equal to 2, what we have is just a, b, a, b, a. And what we want to find are two sets that don't overlap, they're monochromatic, and their uh, diameter is non-decreasing. And if you would like to try it, you're more than welcome to, but I'll, I'll give you a spoiler, you're not going to find one. So, uh, in fact, you can't do this for, for any t that is uh, larger than 3 for uh, the fact that our second set has diameter 3, but we can show that the final set in our, uh, in our group has diameter 2. So that violates our non-decreasing diameter uh, condition. So we have a lower bound, so we want to find an upper bound now. And we did some work here uh, with uh, producing this upper bound, and Bialystocki and uh, Erdish and Lechman in 95 were able to produce an upper bound for F2RT and they showed that uh, it was this value here. And if we fix that R value to be two, that reduces just to 6T minus three. And we uh, wrote some computer code to try to figure out if we could shrink that down a little bit, if we could improve on that value. And so we started and inputted uh, different values for T and ran this computer code and started to notice a pattern starting around T equal to four. So if we, what it looked like was that if once we hit that value of 4, that f of t was going to be equal to 5t minus 4. So that brings us to our theorem. If t is greater than or equal to 4, our value for f of t is in fact 5t minus 4. Now proving this directly was uh, very difficult, so we started with a slightly weaker lemma first. We showed that if t was any positive integer, that our value for f of t was less than or equal to 5t minus 2. And I'd like to go a little bit uh, through an example of that, how we were able to prove that. So if we let t be 4, that means our 5t minus 2 would be 18. And this is just the arbitrary coloring here. Uh, I just chose this one because it, it works out nicely. But you could do this with, in fact, any coloring of so the first thing that we're going to do in determining how we can find uh, this, these sets that make our string t permissible is we're going to find what we call triples. So a triple is just three characters all placed uh, consecutively that are colored with the same color. In this case, they're all colored with eight. What we did next was to divide our string on our doubles. So that's just two characters placed together that are colored the same. So we here we have uh, four different substrings there. Now with each of these, inside of them, there's what we call a monochromatic set of diameter two. So it's a set uh, monochromatic has diameter two. So our first string contains exactly two of these. So uh, we can find them those A's, those two A's, then we have two B's. Our second substring contains one, our triple also contains one, and our last two substrings each contain one as well. Now, our t value was four. So we really just need four of these sets in order to uh, show t permissibility here for this. So we can just pick any four of those sets and show that our set is, our string is t permissible. And this here is showing rigorously how, how we've uh, proven that. But how do we actually, you know, we have this lemma now that says we're somewhere between 5t minus 4 and 5t minus 2, but how do we actually get to proving this theorem? Well, what we did, we're able to work through a series of properties that a string would have to have if it wasn't t permissible. And what we're able to show is that delta, our string, has to contain at least alternating substrings, so the, what we had in the brackets on the last slide. There's restrictions on the lengths of each of these substrings. That is, the uh, they all have to be of length equivalent to 2 mod 3 except for 1, which is length 1 mod 3. You can't start or end with a triple, and in fact there's only one triple if you're not keeping this 
there's also some conditions on what you can have around your triple. Uh, that is, the, it has to be bounded by that string of 1 mod 3 that we uh, mentioned here in the second property. We also were able to show that delta has to end with a string of length 1 or 2. And there's uh, conditions on the last three or four substrings that we have. Now, these first uh, properties were relatively easy to show with uh, just some manipulation of the, of the sets that we had. It's the last property here that proved to be the, the difficulty. And what we were able to do is to classify what delta has to end with in order to be, uh, if it's not T permissible. And each of these have, have a particular meaning. Our little T there is just representing a triple. And those numbers are the length of the individual substrings. And a bar just represents modular 3. And with each of these, what we're able to do is uh, some more manipulation of what we uh, can do with those sets and show that no matter how e any of these that we end with, our delta is in fact T permissible. So what that means is that there are in fact no strings that can satisfy all of these conditions. So what that tells us is that delta is in fact, or f of t is in fact 5t minus 4. Now I'd like to mention a little bit of the future directions that we could go in with this work. Uh, we've started to look at what, we, what would happen if we increased the number of colors that we have, and we were able to indicate a lower bound here on uh, if we included three colors, uh, f2, 3, t and we were found that it was 7t minus 6. And it uses a very similar construction to the lower bound for f22t. Just uh, we've got that extra color in there. It's just that string abc, abc, a, repeated t minus 1 times. And it's pretty much an identical proof to uh, what we used before. And in fact, no matter how many colors that you choose, whether it be 5, whether it be 50, this same string will in fact work just with the proper number of colors. You repeat each color twice and then tack an extra A on the end. Repeat those T minus one times and uh, that string will in fact be sufficient to show that uh, you have a lower bound. That is all for me. Thank you. Of, of trying to increase the number of colors as well. 